All right. So thank you for joining. Um, and thank you all for uh, watching the video remotely. Unfortunately, the world is round. And so that means um, some people have daylight and some people are in the dark while I'm giving this presentation. So um, again, my name is Steve McCown and I'm a chief architect at Anonymy Labs. And um, today I'm gonna talk about personhood credentials. Um, as I get started, a little bit about Anonymy. Uh, we were founded in 2014, and our purpose is to help people be able to control their personal and private information online, and that we, we believe people should be able to decide when they share that and be able to do that voluntarily instead of having that kind of taken from them as we're seeing on the internet right now. Our observation early on was that our communication endpoints have become our default online identifiers. So whether that's your email address, your phone number, a credit card, or maybe a social media handle, those are used to collect and correlate information about you and each individual person online and to be able to um, have one site collect a bit of information, another site collect more, and then data aggregators be able to correlate that as a complete profile online. And we're, we're seeing the downsides of that uh, right now. And early on, that's, that's what we had um, identified. So what, what our mission is, is we preserve privacy by disrupting data tracking. So how that happens on the previous slide, I showed that that's related to your email and phone number and so forth. And so we have this concept of a, a pseudo, which is allows you to create um, activity specific contact sets. So for example, um, it's really customary to have a business card at work and that business card will have your business email and phone number and address and so forth. And uh, you'll use that in a business context. But then when you go home and you interact with your friends and family, then you have a different phone number and a different email and you tend to keep those separate. So we took that concept and we spread that um, um, even more fine grained so that you can have a different communication contact set while you're shopping or traveling or doing any one of a number of hobbies. And that way, as the internet uh, and the sites you interact with collect information on you, then those are separate because they don't use the same email or the same phone number um, to correlate that information. And so that helps preserve your privacy while allowing you to um, interoperate with the internet as it is. So just a little bit about uh, why do we need verifiable credentials? Um, so in 20, um, 2022, there was a report that came out um, called a Account Takeover in 2022. And what it, a couple of data points from that report are that 25 billion login credentials over time had been leaked to the dark web. So those databases containing um, usernames and passwords or password hashes has been leaked to the dark web and they're available there right now. And that at that time, there was a 65% increase over uh, the amount of credentials leaked to the web um, over 2020. Another interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, another interesting data point is that 98% of organizations have vendor relationships with at least one third party that has experienced a data breach in the last two years. So even if your systems are secure and perfect and there's no cybersecurity issues, uh, you will be interacting with other people that do. And this creates a, a problem. And so the the whole entire username password um, method is is really broken. And most of us uh, watching this video um, participating in this industry will already be aware of that. But that's the magnitude that we have. 
So this challenge is, is about personhood credentials. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. So first of all, there's just too much personal data available on the, on the internet right now, and that's come from data breaches or hacks, social media disclosures, uh, uh, commerce sites that are collecting and sharing information, data aggregators that are reselling that information. There's just so much there. And kind of what that means is when, when you go to your bank and you need a password reset or something done with your account, they go through a series of questions to verify your identity based on knowledge you have. Well, hackers really have that information for the most part right now. And so they can answer those questions that you get asked. Now, AI is also getting very, very good at being able to mimic live people and to generate human specific um, expressions. So when I'm talking and pausing during uh, uh, phrases and words that I say, AI is getting so good that it is able to mimic that right now. And we've seen that human-like avatars are created and it's very inexpensive comparatively to the um, potential um, theft and rewards that hackers might be be seeking um, to be able to employ these systems. So um, recently, well, this is a little while ago, um, there's an article there on the bottom right from CNN and a finance worker ended up paying out $25 million after they were in an interactive Zoom call talking with an AI that purported to be um, the CEO of their company or the uh, CFO of their company. And so even interacting with someone you think is a real person is now has now become uh, problematic. So what is it you do when you can't trust your eyes and ears um, when you're online? Um, now, on top of all of that, we have these CAPTCHAs that are used um, to kind of do a test of humanity, to a test of a live person. Um, so if you can solve the puzzle or enter the code that's kind of scribbled upon, then it's a, there's a presumption that you're a real person. And we're seeing now that AIs can easily uh, trick those those CAPTCHAs. So we need we need something. And um, the personhood credentials we'll talk about are building on top of uh, the verifiable credentials uh, that we have today. So recently, um, in end of August, I believe, there was a paper published, and there's a link to this paper referenced on the Hackathon Challenge page, so you can grab that. Um, and this this paper was about uh, per, uh, personhood credentials, what they are, why we need them, um, a lot of uh, discussion about where we ought to go with that. Um, part of the motivation is we need these um, credentials, a new type of credential, because we really need to solve this problem of are you a human or are the is the person the remote party you're interacting with a human or an AI or some sort of bot. Um, and the personhood credentials as proposed in this paper are based on advanced cryptography and think um, post-quantum cryptography is um, coming along. And what uh, what's happening is we need to move beyond the capabilities of what AI can, can do right now. Now, AI is not able to break um, the strong uh, modern cryptographic proofs. And so this uh, personhood credentials paper is based on using strong cryptography in a variety of forms. And then being able to implement that in ways that we can interact with, with the internet as it is today. So um, that can be embodying uh, strong cryptographic proofs as um, uh, certificates. Um, we can add biometric proof data to that. Think fingerprint, retina scan, facial recognition, um, things that are emerging or we see in certain sectors right now today 
uh, these new types of credentials can be based on that. So why are um, personhood credentials needed? Well, we need to be able to prove that actions performed online were taken by a human, specifically an authorized human, and not just some sort of AI or bot. So we're getting into the world where um, online voting uh, for your respective countries and jurisdictions is kind of a reasonable thing to, to expect to see in the next few years. However, there's a lot of um, concern about the integrity of voting in such a manner. There's also legal, legal documents, buying, selling your house, a car, um, authorship of music, books, other types of um, uh, literary creative works. Um, we need personhood credentials to help counter deep fakes. So just like uh, that CNN article was reporting about the um, employee that transferred $25 million based on a supposed conversation with their CFO, deep fakes like that are making it really hard to know what's real and, and what's not. And so we need another, another form to back that up. Um, we need PhDs to help reduce hackers' ability to conduct a wide variety of illicit activities or to prove ownership of our digital assets. I mean, they, they can be Bitcoin, NFCs for those that are still using them, or even authorship of a variety of, of works and things. So um, the, other, the other thing that was mentioned in the paper was we need to reduce the ability of hostile actors, actors to feed bad data into AI models. So the problem with AI is it's simply an algorithm and it's not intelligent in the sense that humans are intelligent, capable of creative thought and so forth. And so by feeding um, specific types of data into an AI model, you can get the model to give a predictable or, or selected outcome. And so there's a whole um, area of research on the white hat, black hat side about feeding data into AI algorithms to um, either have a, a beneficial output or, or some uh, specifically desired output. So where will people get uh, personhood credentials? Um, at this point, it really looks like governments. Um, that can be birth certificates is, is a very likely uh, case that's discussed. So when someone's born, they get their first credential. That'll probably sit in uh, the custody of their parents until they're old enough to do something with it. Um, maybe they'll come in the form of driver's licenses or passports or, or those types of things. Uh, a question raised in the paper is, will there be only one credential or will there be multiple? And that's a, a good point of debate. There's, there's lots of these kinds of discussions, but what we need is a, a solution to the security and privacy issues we have on the internet combined with these extreme advancements in, in AI. So what about tracking? Um, I mentioned at the outset at Anonymy, one of our um, core concerns is about how people um, have their privacy violated by virtue of all this tracking. And so what, what we're seeing both in the verifiable credentials industry that we're all working in, as well as um, what was postulated in the paper, is we need privacy preserving verifiable credentials that we can use on a daily basis. So that's things like if you take the W3C credential format, you, you want to be able to use those in ways that you avoid correlation with this credential subject, which is likely a very specific identifier for the person in question. And um, credentials such as a non-creds or um, W3C credentials can be created um, with zero, zero knowledge proofs in mind. 
and they need to be designed that way from from the get-go otherwise um, it's it's not likely that you'll be able to use those credentials in a privacy uh, purely privacy preserving fashion so zero knowledge proofs they've been around for a while um, there's new proofs um, being studied and ready to emerge right now that might take advantage of stronger cryptography but these are really neat because they can give you um, for example, range proofs. Are you older than age 25? Are you uh, between 25 and 35? That type of thing where you can ask questions, whereas now you might be asked to provide your actual age or even your birth date, which is one of those protected pieces of information that your doctor or bank might ask you. And so you try to hold that um, the specific information back but then be able to use it in such a way that the verifier on the remote end can have their questions answered. Um, and so you can also ask simple questions through verif, verif excuse me, zero knowledge proofs. Um, do you have a college degree? Uh, were you employ are you employed by a certain employer and so forth? Do you have an account on a particular site? Um, another, way that we can help reduce tracking is through selective disclosure. Um, when you go get a, um, a cryptocurrency account right now and you go to your preferred exchange, more than likely they will ask you to give a, um, a, a image or scan of your driver's license and both sides so they get all the information. And really, Zero knowledge proofs address what kind of questions they should be and need to be asking. So, um, for uh, most governments, they want to know uh, where the money's going, whether it's being money laundered, whether it's a legal transaction. And so, there's certain questions they ask. But because we're in a po uh, position right now where you end up giving your entire driver's license or passport or government ID, you give way more information than is necessary. And so zero knowledge proofs and selective disclosure will help you um, dial that back down so that you give things like um, maybe your name, maybe your tax identifier, maybe um, your country of nationality so that the, the taxing authority can do their job without them getting things like um, your height and weight and eye color and whether you're an organ donor and all sorts of things that are connected right now to your driver's license, which might be irrelevant to the process. Um, and um, yeah, and so there may be legal requirements for that as well. So uh, coming, coming back to our hackathon challenge. So that's what a personhood credential is and, and why we need it. So what we're looking at as anatomy is we, we like the idea of personhood credentials a lot and they're what they can potentially attain. So we've, we've run this um, uh, challenge as a way to kind of kickstart the personhood credential industry. There's the paper. I haven't heard of many follow-ons. There's been a ton of discussion um, all the way from engineers to chief executives and so forth. There's been a lot of discussion. So there's a lot of interest in what the paper was addressing. And we're hoping to kind of kickstart this and get people thinking about and developing uh, software given the tools that we have that might um, hope to meet the goals of the personhood credentials paper. So a couple of things we would like to see in the challenge. Now, this is a blue ocean uh, strategy type challenge. We have a couple of things that we'd really like to see, a couple that are optional, and then we'd also like to see your creativity as well. Um, so the first, um, the first point that we'd like to see is being able to um, issue a credential and demonstrate um, issuing credentials um, in the PHC format. Now you ask what format? On the challenge page and in the channel, um, our, our Discord uh, 
uh, channel, I've put a reference to a document where we have a very bare bones uh, credential schema that you can use. Feel free to start from that, to only use that to um, enhance that however you'd like, get creative. That's what we're hoping to see. Uh, so start with that as kind of a base W3C credential format and then add stuff to it. We would like to see that one, one of the tenets of the paper was that there are checks and balances on the side of the issuers that the same person, however they're enrolling and being verified, can only be issued one credential. Um, there's other scenarios talked about in the paper, but let's kind of stick to that for one. So each user, when they go to get a credential, they can get one and only one. And then we'd like to see people uh, be able to use that in a pseudonymous plat, uh, manner so that they can interact anonymously. So part of um, what happens with zero knowledge proofs is uh, you might get asked, are you a citizen of this particular country? Are you an employee of this company? Do you have an account at my bank? We want you to be able to say yes in a cryptographically verifiable format without giving all sorts of other identifying information. And so we'd like, we'd like to see um, uh, pseudonymity on that. Um, I mentioned verifiable proofs, or excuse me, zero knowledge proofs and selective disclosure quite a bit. Um, we'd like to see those. Those are very, very important. And then we'd like to see whatever it is you develop um, coupled with some, any one of the DIF uh, founded foundational standards. Now at DIF, I'm uh, one of the co-chairs of the DITCOM working group. So I always have a personal bias towards DITCOM, but there's a lot of things that um, DIF does and different credential schemas you might interact with, uh, decentralized web nodes. There, there's just a lot of different things that DIFF does. Pick one, pick your favorite, something you might be working with right now, and show how the personhood credential that you will create um, can interact with that in some way. Um, and like I say, just get creative. Um, at Anonymy, we're using the Occupy uh, platform. And so um, it's kind of a complex platform. So we didn't make it a required. But if you're already using it, and you're familiar with that platform, it would it would be really interesting to show how a personhood credential might interact with the Occupy platform. Like I say, that one's optional, because it does, there is kind of a learning curve there. Feel free to pick um, something else that you're already working with. Use your favorite did method, you know, whether it's Bitcoin based or TDW based, um, sovereign based, whatever based in um, whatever, that's fine. Because at the end of the day, we're hoping that all of these did methods uh, by virtue of the standards are all um, interactive. Um, we're also using the anon cred standard. So while we based this challenge more on the on the uh, arguably more common W3C credential standard, um, feel free to tie into the anon creds as well. There's um, a lot of benefits over there, uh, but because uh, W3C was actually stipulated in the paper and it's a little more common. We, we chose that as the, the basis for the challenge, and um, but we're offering a non-creds as, as kind of a, an additional optional thing that you can use. Um, like I said, this is, is quite a bit open-ended, and that is um, that's by, by design. We want to we want to kickstart this industry. So we didn't want to put too many constraints on what you can and can't do. We just want to see how creative you get. Um, prototypes, proofs of concept. As I mentioned, this is a blue ocean challenge, meaning do something that nobody else is doing. That's fine. That's encouraged. Um, and then the idea is that whatever we end up creating through this challenge, we'd like to donate that back to the community. So whereas other challenges um, might be 
based on a particular sponsor's um, own products. We, we've intentionally gone the other direction. And the reason we're doing that is we want to seed the open source community because personhood credentials don't do us a lot of good if only our company is using them. This is a case where if every company and every effort, every standards body was using these credentials in some way, the, the network effect kits, kicks in and the benefit of using the credential increases by the number of organizations using them. So that's what we gain out of this is the fact that these standards or these, these credentials will be more widely used. So that's what we're trying to encourage. So if you're using a particular uh, platform or wallet or, um, even credential format in addition to the W3C credential format, feel free, show us something that that's cool. Um, that, um, yeah, it's, it's up to you. Um, any questions, any questions on this? I, I know I've talked for um, quite a bit of time. Um, any questions you might have on, on what we're talking about and how unconstrained it is. All right. Well, that is what I had prepared today. Like I say, this is um, completely geared towards you being creative and coming up with something new and um and then being able to share that with with the community so um yeah in closing thank you there's all my contact information if there's questions you didn't particularly want to ask um in in this call that's awesome but um i'm on discord email linkedin lots of other places too so um feel free to uh contact me sometime after the call and throughout the hackathon. And I uh, thank you all for participating. I think this is great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. I also drop the channel. Anonymy does have a channel in our hackathon Discord server. So if you have any follow-up questions, want to continue the discussion after this session ends today, you can go there. And I went ahead and I dropped that in the chat. Um, and also, if you have any just general questions about the hackathon, feel free to drop in there. Um, I'll drop the links one more time uh, that I dropped at the beginning because uh, I know some people came on later. Uh, but um, I did drop in the um, the page with Anonymous Challenge. Um, however, in order to officially be part of the hackathon, you do have to register through Dev Post. So I dropped that as well. Um, the Discord link, um, and also the Hackathon info site, um, since not everything is is on, uh, wasn't possible to have everything in one place on DevPost, so we did have to make a, a separate site. So, um, so if you have any questions on anything, the information is all there. Um, feel free to reach out uh, to me, to Kim, to Steve, um, and we can help you on your way. So thank you so much. And thanks once again, Steve, for holding a session today. We'll make the, the recording available to everyone. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you all for joining. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all. Goodbye.